Welcome to our lectures on stylistics. The theme of the first lecture is Stylistics as a Linguistic Science. The outline covers the following points. The first, stylistics as a linguistic discipline, its aims and subject matter. The second, branches of stylistics. And the third, links of stylistics with other branches of linguistics. I would like to start the lecture with a quote by Paul Simpson. Do stylistics is to explore the creativity in the use of language. When we speak about the aims of stylistics, we should ask ourselves the question, why should we do stylistics? The responses can be two. To enrich our ways of thinking about language by shedding light on the language system as well as learning the rules of language. Stylistics often explores texts where those rules are banned. And the second response, acquire the skills of adequate comprehension and accurate interpretation of texts used in different spheres of human communication, mass media, editorials, brief news, analytical articles, scientific prose, poetry, drama, etc. The subject matter of stylistics. The word stylistics is derived from the word style, which originates from the Latin word stylus, a slender pointed writing instrument, a small stick with a pointed end, used by the ancient Greeks and Romans as they scratched letters on wax-covered plates or wax table tablets. Later on, it came to be metonymically used for a manner of writing or a mode of expressions. One of the American linguists, Michael Ripeter, wrote, Stylistics studies the act of communication not merely as producing a verbal chain, but as bearing the speaker's personality and as compelling the address's attention. Stylistic studies the means of linguistic expressiveness in carrying a huge load of information. To decode this information, one should give a detailed and thorough analysis of the stylistic functioning of all the linguistic means used. Stylistics can be defined as a branch of modern linguistics devoted to the detailed analysis of literary style or of the linguistic choices made by speakers and writers in non-literary context. This is the definition given in the Chris Paldick Oxford Concise Dictionary of Literary Terms. But the definition given by the Soviet linguist Ilya Galperin is as following. Stylistics is a branch of general linguistics which deals with the investigation of two independent tasks. Stylistic studies the special media of language which are called stylistic devices and expressive means. And stylistic studies the types of text which are distinguished by the pragmatic aspect of the communication and are called functional styles of language. If we come to the second point of our lecture, that is branches in stylistics, we can point out a lot of different uh, uh, branches, such as linguistic stylistics, literary stylistics, corpus stylistics, humanist, film, functionalist, historical, multimodal. But for us as futures linguists, uh, the most vital of them are the first two, linguistic stylistics and literary stylistics. Let's consider them. The main concerns of lingual stylistics are, are the following. The study of functional styles as subsystems of the literary language, distinguished from one another by a peculiar set of independent language means and fulfilling a specific function in communication. The study of linguistic elements from the viewpoint of their ability to render emotions, feelings, additional associations and evaluations. Here we can point out 
stylistic phonetics, stylistic morphology, stylistic lexicology, and stylistic syntax. The Soviet linguist Olga Sergeyevna Akhmanova distinguished language stylistics and speech stylistics. According to her, language stylistic studies, the peculiarity of language subsystems, the specific vocabulary, phraseology, and syntax, expressive, emotive, evaluative features of various linguistic means. Speech stylistics, in her opinion, studies texts, the way they render the content, the literary norm, and deviations from norm. One and the same information may be rendered differently, depending on the situation of communication, on the social status of the interlocutors, on their relations, on the emotional attitude of the speakers, their mood and help. These factors are not explicitly expressed in the text. They are rendered in different roundabout ways. Thus, the main task of stylistics is to give the stylistic analysis of the given information or to decode it. Information in speech may be of two types. The first, subject, logical information, making up the essence of the utterance. And the second, additional information about conditions of communication and the participants of communication. For example, I really don't know where I'm a good girl. Which in the original sentence means I really don't know whether I'm a good girl. Here, in addition to the content, the author also describes the person's manner of speaking, which is not quite literate. There exist two trends in the stylistic analysis. To single out the key idea of the extract, that is, to define different stylistic devices to assert the initial hypothesis, and to single out some formal details, peculiarities of the text, that is, explain their usage, considering them in their interaction, and then formulate the idea and the theme of the extract. Both ways of analysis are aimed at revealing the unity of form and meaning at perceiving the text as a unit. Of late, there has appeared a new term, stylistics of decoding or stylistics of perception, opposed to the term stylistics of encoding. Stylistics of encoding presupposes the knowledge not only of the creative biography of the author, but also of the literary epoch, literary trend, and the history of language, of literature. Stylistics of decoding studies the way a literary work influences the reader. It concentrates the reader's attention on the stylistic, on the analysis of the linguistic means used. It deals with text interpretation. Literary stylistics deals with expressive means and stylistic devices characteristic for a definite work of art, man of letters literary movement, trend or epoch, and factors influencing the expressiveness of language. In other words, literary stylistics concerns itself with the individual style of a writer, belonging to a definite literary school or trend. It studies a combination of expressive means used by some author, typical of a certain trend or some literary epoch, and factors determining poetic expressiveness. But the two branches of stylistics are, of course, interdependent, interconnected, as the object of their investigation is the same, that is, their object is language. To better understand and to better compare and oppose literary and linguistic stylistics, I would like to present the quote by Short. Stylistics can sometimes look like other linguistics or literary criticism, depending upon where you are standing when looking at it. 
So, some of my literary critical colleagues sometimes accuse me of being an unfeeling linguist, saying that my analysis of poems, say, are too analytical, being too full of linguistic jargon, and leaving insufficient room for personal preference on the part of the reader. My linguist colleagues, on the other hand, sometimes say that I am no linguist at all, but a critic in disguise, who cannot make his descriptions of language precise enough to count as real linguistics. They think that I leave too much to intuition and that I am not analytical enough. I think I've got the mix just right, of course. And now we'd like to talk about the third point of our lecture, that is, links of stylistics with other branches of linguistics. Being a branch of linguistics, stylistics is closely connected with all its branches, as the subject matter of the stylistic analysis is the language in all its aspects lexical, grammatical, phonetic. But stylistics differs from other branches of linguistics by its tasks and approaches. Stylistics and phonetics. Phono stylistics deals with peculiarities of the sound arrangement of speech for creating a stylistic effect. Onomatopoeia, alliteration, rhyme, rhythm, it is it studies the way the sound system of the language becomes an expressive language means. Phonal stylistics also studies the usage of non-standard pronunciation with comic or satiric effect to show social inequality. The majority of scientists consider that the graphic expression of phonetics is also the subject of phonal stylistics. Though of late, some authors have begun to speak of a separate branch of stylistics called graphical stylistics. It studies the expressive potential of punctuation marks, different types of prints, capitalization, hyphenation, multiplication, etc. But this branch has not been thoroughly studied yet. The connection between stylistics and lexicology. Lexicological stylistics studies words, but from the viewpoint of their stylistic functions, their stylistic coloring. It takes into account expressive, emotive, evaluative potential of words, belonging to different layers of vocabulary, their interaction with different conditions of communication, it studies all those stylistic devices which are based on the simultaneous realization of different types of word meaning. For example, in the sentence, the loud ocean was all around us, we can see the epithet. Stylistics interacts with such theoretical discipline as semasiology. This is a branch of linguistics whose area of study is a most complicated and enormous sphere, that is, of meaning. The term semantics is also widely used in linguistics in relation to verbal meanings. Semasiology, in its turn, is often related to the theory of signs in general and deals with visual as well as verbal meanings. Meaning is not attached to the level of the word only, or for that matter, to one level at all, but correlates with all of them, more themes, words, phrases, or texts. This is one of the most challenging areas of research, since practically all stylistic effects are based on their interplay between different kinds of meaning on different levels. Suffice it to say that there are numerous types of linguistic meanings attached to linguistic units, such as grammatical, lexical, logical, denotative, connotative, emotive, evaluative, expressive, and stylistic. Onomasiology or onomatology is the theory of naming 
dealing with the choice of words when naming or assessing some object or phenomenon. In stylistic analysis, we often have to do with a transfer of nominal meaning in a text. Here we can give an example, um, antonomasia, metaphor, metonymy, etc. Connection between stylistics and grammar. Morphological stylistics considers only those morphological forms which help to render expressiveness and thus can be stylistically marked. It is, it studies stylistic potential of various grammatical categories. Syntactic stylistics analyzes the expressive potential of various sentence patterns, of peculiar arrangements of sentence elements, and of various interactions of adjacent sentences. For example, these two sentences, I have to beg you for money daily, we can see the syntactic stylistic device as segmentation. Stylistics is not only connected with different branches of linguistics, but also with such disciplines as literature, psychology, logics, the theory of information, the theory of euphemisms, the theory of sound symbolism, and many others. That is all in brief concerning the first lecture. Thank you for your attention.